Do you have an iPhone? I do. Welcome to Salon Talks at the Trip Gallery. With me today is Jill Basham, who is an award-winning gallery artist. She's here to share her creative ideas about her upcoming show here in November, which is titled Another Side of Jill Basham. We had a conversation last winter. Jill is so well known for her emotive landscapes with billowing clouds and broad brush strokes. And I wanted your fans and collectors to see another side of you, whether it's studio work, whether it's things that you like to paint that you don't necessarily do in your plein air painting competitions mm -hmm. that you go across the country winning awards, et cetera, et cetera. So, so I wanted to ask Jill if she could share her initial thoughts when I asked her to create this show. I was a little bit surprised uh, that uh, a gallery director owner would venture into um, offering an artist the opportunity, honestly, to um, explore beyond what they sell. And, um, and I so, so appreciated that. And I was uh, a little nervous about it, but I also knew that um, I have always ventured, you know, left and right uh, with my paintings. And I thought that um, you giving me that opportunity was, uh, was gonna be very valuable for me. I'm hoping that it resonates with um, the people who come and see the show. And it gave me what I call an opportunity to, um, to venture into uh, things that I don't typically do, such as urban scenes and using different mediums, um, such as gouache and um, exploring cold wax even, which uh, people might not be familiar with, but that sort of mixing in cold wax medium with oil painting oils to give it uh, more of a texture, mm -hmm. as well as abstraction. Um, I, I appreciate uh, abstract uh, works and, um, and enjoyed delving into that. So, you know, I felt like to me, you were offering me a bit of a gift. Mm -hmm. um, and so thank you for that. I appreciate it. So do no, you I'm... find that when you go into your studio as opposed to going and painting on plein air that that's more of a challenge for you because it's maybe a scene that's not necessarily right in front of you, but it's in your head. It's something that you've seen or it's a photograph you're working yeah. from somewhere right. you've traveled. Right. So that's got to be a little bit more of a challenge. In some ways, yes, I do find it more challenging, but in other ways, I think more freeing. Uh, so yes, it, it, I can bring an idea into the studio and oftentimes I want to work larger. Um, and, and sometimes it doesn't work. I mean, sometimes I have to um, regroup and then, and then have another, another go at it or, or give it some time to sit off the easel and come back to it and then I have this, Oh, okay, this is this is how I, I can do this. And oftentimes, like with um, one that's in the show, actually a couple of them, the urban scenes, I start with a photo image, and um, I often start with the image upside down. So I'll, I'll flip the photo upside down, lay in uh, the basic design of it, and, and even go into starting to paint it, and then put the image, the photo down, not reference it and then have a little bit more freedom to use my expression, um, which. Right, so that's when you're able to put your own emotion, et cetera, and that's just so prevalent in all of your paintings. I think that's what draws your viewer in is the emotive quality that you're able to express in your, your paintings. Thank you. Well, that's, that's, that's really my goal. I was gonna say the times when that is lacking is when it bothers me as, as a painting. Yes, it has to structurally hold up, especially when you're working on buildings or bridges. At the same time, I wanna let that go so that it's not ju just the bridge, just the building, that there's some um, of my emotion, how I felt about seeing that, you know, such as the, um, the view from uh, Dumbo in Brooklyn and seeing the, the, the bridge and, and just the, um, that scale uh, of mm -hmm. the Brooklyn Bridge um, overshadowing 
um, the buildings and then the little Empire State Building in the, in the <laughs> background between. And it was just like, oh, whenever my heart goes a pitter patter, I know that's, <laughs> I, I got to paint that. <laughs> so there's another piece in the show, which I'm really anxious to see that we were just talking about that you said you started it, you kind of roughed it in. And I think this is what a lot of artists, I hear you talking amongst yourselves, mm -hmm. like at Plenary Easton, mm -hmm. where do I stop? Right. That's the big question is, where do we stop? I think, and for us, it's oftentimes we take it too far. We almost need someone else uh, to come in and say, stop, yeah. or, you know. Right. But the other thing is, um, there's a risk to stopping uh, because, have I done enough? It's always that question, well, well have I done enough? But, if, but sometimes if you let that sort of marinate again in the studio and you come back and it still has that, I've done enough, I can, I can leave it alone with that particular painting. Yeah, I, I just thought it's, it's not gonna get better than where it is right mm. now, in my, in my opinion. So I, I left it and that was, that was pretty abstract. So tell us a little bit about this painting here um, you've done, which is called Green Velvet. Okay, ever since I was a kid, since um, I came, my first flight on an airplane, I was absolutely taken by um, how things looked, how the land looked from above. And I think I would look around at adults flying and they seemed so like blase about it. And meanwhile, in my, in my child head, I was like, this is so exciting. I mean, look at this incredible view. And as I got older, you know, that fascination never left me. So I'm the one that's sitting in the aisle seat. I'm the one that, <laughs> that has the, my phone out to, you know, take the, take the photos. Um, and so this is really um, what I've seen coming in uh, towards BWI Airport and along the Ches Chesapeake Bay and the tributaries. You know, you have that winding, the winding river um, going up and just, just that sort of feeling of, I wonder what's going on down there. I encourage everyone to come in November. The show will be up all month. We'll have an opening reception on Friday the 1st. Jill will be here to meet and greet and watch everyone's reactions to these wonderful collection of new works.